and I'll be reading verses 12 through uh, 16. Philippians chapter 3, verses 12 through 16. It says, Not that I have already attained or am already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, let us, as many as are mature, have this mind. And if in anything you think otherwise, God will reveal even this to you. Nevertheless, to the degree that we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule and let us be of the same mind. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the morning you've given us and the time where we are able to gather together to worship you. And Father, I do pray that yeah, you will be with those of our congregation that um, have, were not able to be here today, Lord, just out of um, either concern for their health or, uh, Father, that they uh, um, are worried about uh, their uh, interaction with others and, and spreading something. Father, we uh, would pray that you will be near to them as we know it is hard to be apart from one another that uh, the fellowship here is is often very sweet and refreshing and uh, father we are encouraged by that and uh, lord i would pray that you will uh, be with those who are not able to come that you would keep them healthy and uh, lord that you would give them wisdom to know uh, what best to do to uh, keep themselves safe and father i would uh, do want to take a moment to pray for our country as uh, Lord, our, our country, our, our world has seen a lot of uh, upheaval, a lot of um, tense moments, a lot of, a lot of trouble and a lot of hurt and anger is being expressed. And uh, Father, I pray uh, for those in our leadership that they would uh, uh, listen and that they would uh, respond in a way that is godly, that uh, Father, they would uh, that you would give them wisdom to, to guide our country through these difficult times. And uh, Father, I, I pray for, uh, for your church as we are a light uh, to the dark world around us. Uh, and uh, Father, I pray that you will help us to be that light, that, that source of, of love and truth uh, to those who are uh, in need of Christ. Uh, Lord, we know that uh, without Jesus in our life, we will not have any peace. Uh, Lord, more importantly, we won't have any peace with you. And I pray that uh, these words, uh, Lord, that maybe there is one who will hear them and, uh, Father, that they will hear what they need to know uh, to, to help them, whether they need to be saved or need um, guidance or need to be um, directed by you, Lord, or challenged in their life, that, Father, you would use your word uh, to change lives this morning. And Lord, would you begin here with ours? Uh, thank you for this uh, section of scripture that uh, the Apostle Paul writes that, Lord, he encourages us, he motivates us to, uh, to pursue Christ. And I pray that that would be our goal. And I pray uh, in Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> All right, uh, Philippians chapter 3, verses 12 through 16. And... Paul uses an illustration here of, of athleticism, something I am not known for. <laughs> uh, I, I have been known to um, play a sport now and then, but uh, overall, that's not the direction my life tends. Uh, but I got on my computer this morning, and I think my computer knows that too, because uh, then when, whenever I, I launch the web browser, there's this page that offers me articles to read, which most of the time I ignore them. But this one caught my eye, and it said it was like seven or eight ways to extend your life. And I thought, well, that should be interesting. Uh, I've been because I've been studying Philippians and, and Paul pressing towards the goal and all that, and and I thought it'd be interesting to see what the world has to say about how to extend your life. 
And uh, the article it was pretty typical about how to live long. You need to uh, eat real food, you know, as opposed to, I guess, plastic food. I don't know. <laughs> or <laughs> processed food, I think, is what they were talking about. Uh, but it said you needed to eat real food to try to avoid supplements if you can. I guess, like, I don't know, vitamin supplements or health supplements. I don't know. Um, it said, uh, don't smoke and don't drink too much alcohol. And I thought, well, I've got that covered. <laughs> Uh, you don't want to see me drunk. I, I don't want to see me drunk. So <laughs> uh, beyond that, there's uh, multiple reasons not to do those things. Um, so no problem there. And it said to enjoy nature. And I thought, well, I do enjoy nature uh, from the comfort of my house. Because <laughs> right now nature is trying to kill me with uh, allergies. Uh, but uh, but I, it said, you know, make sure you get outside and walk, you know, go hiking and do all this and that. And I thought, yeah, that's not too bad. Then there were a couple I really didn't like. One was that um, sleep. It said you, need, you needed at least eight hours of sleep a night. Uh, and I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> well, what about what if you have insomnia? <laughs> How does that work? Uh, my body doesn't want me to sleep that much. I don't know. Uh, I know people differ on, on that, but, um, you know, I, I always thought you can sleep when you're dead, I suppose. <laughs> Uh, but it said to get eight hours of sleep. Then it said also to, uh, to move, that you need at least 30 minutes of moderate to intense exercise a day to really... <laughs> Are you listening, Bob? <laughs> I saw Isina turn to look at you. <laughs> uh, yeah, so you need at least 30 minutes a day of intense, moderate to intense exercise to really begin to benefit from... Um, having a, a, a moving lifestyle. I guess they, they say a lot, uh, people today are more sedentary than they were, you know, even 50 years ago. And, you know, that's kind of ironic as I'm sitting there reading the internet, you know. <laughs> I wonder why. <laughs> uh, they could bring so many things into your house now. Uh, so those were the two that really, I think, stepped on my toes about making sure I'm getting the sleep I need and, and making sure I'm exercising and uh, within my ability, I guess, well, that's, that's, um, you can really, uh, reinterpret that term, I guess, within my ability, right? <laughs> but, uh, th those are ways that the world says you can extend your life. Um, scripture, of course, uh, has direction to, for us on how to extend our life into eternity and make that life worth eternity. Uh, and that is, of course, pursuing Christ, turning to, to Christ. But Paul's going to take that illustration of running, the illustration of a race, and he's using it to apply to our Christian life. And he's talking to uh, the church, uh, the, the church at Philippi, but it, I believe he's addressing all Christians through this too, that this is where we need to find ourselves, is in this position that Paul is in, this pos position of progressing towards Jesus. And I believe what he's telling us is how we can achieve uh, uh, spiritual maturity. And there are many ways we can do that. But here I, wanna, I want to point out uh, three and a half <laughs> ways. I say a half because uh, that fourth one we're going to probably talk more about next week. Uh, but three, three ways that, we can, uh, that are evident that we are maturing as a believer uh, and Paul encourages us to follow those, those ways, to follow those paths. That if you're thinking, I want to grow as a Christian, here's one way that we can do that. And Paul is not talking about our physical health here. He's not talking about, he's talking about our spiritual health. And he's not talking about earning our salvation by doing good works. That if you work hard enough, then God will be pleased and will save you. As I said last week, uh, in the video message, that pretty much goes against everything Paul has been saying in the book of Philippians, and if not that, just in all of his writings. But this is, if you, you are a believer, you are on this race. You are on this track. You are pursuing what Paul is pursuing, and he's telling you, here's how you ought to run. And first of all, we need to be uh, dissatisfied with our position, which is really interesting uh, to think about because you think about dissatisfaction as a, as a bad thing. But Paul is not satisfied with where he's at. Uh, let's look at verse 12. 
He says, not that I have already attained or am already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. So after all that he's talked about with his, uh, the, the boastings of his flesh, and he's been talking about Christ, and he's been talking about wanting to know him and know the power of his resurrection and to know the fellowship of his suffering and all these things, he wants them to know, I have not attained spiritual perfection yet. I have not been perfected, he says in verse 12. Uh, that I'm not perfect, I'm not complete yet, and I don't know Christ completely yet, and I haven't seen everything there is to see about Christ yet, but he says, I am pressing on, I am continuing to go on so that I can lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has laid hold of me. He says, I, Christ laid hold of me to gain this prize, and I am pursuing that goal. So it's worth thinking, what has God gotten a hold of us for? What is God's purpose for us? And we need to pursue that. Uh, and we need to grow. And Paul is not satisfied, uh, I think, with where he's at. He's always progressing on. He's always pursuing. If we want to uh, continue on with the, uh, the um, athletic illustration, um, I'm sorry, Bob, I'm going to talk about a treadmill now. <laughs> um, if you guys need counseling afterwards, uh, <laughs> my door will be open. Um, but uh, uh, think about the treadmill. If you keep it, uh, I'm really sorry about this, but if you keep it at level one on speed one and never increase it, uh, you know, there's probably some benefit to that, but you're not going to get stronger. You're not going to get in shape. Uh, from what I know about those who are, um, from what I've just picked up here and there, that uh, those who are, uh, oh, what's the, anyway, they help, they help you work out and, and stuff. Uh, physical therapists and things like that, uh, physical trainers, they know that if somebody is very serious about uh, gaining strength and getting stronger, they're going to push themselves. They're going to make it hurt. They're going to make it hard. If it's easy, you don't grow. You don't grow muscle. You don't grow endurance. But when it gets hard, that's when you can build up your strength and gain endurance. So instead of, of uh, sauntering along at, at the first level, you know, turn up, turn up the, the heat a little bit on the treadmill. Um, there's, there's one at the, at the Y in Atlantic I've used a few times that really has a steep <laughs> incline. It felt like I was climbing up the side of a mountain <laughs> on one of them, but it's, it's not quite that bad. But it, it was a pretty steep incline. Uh, so I don't use that one anymore. That that one kind of hurt, uh, but it's it's enjoyable to to push yourself to uh, to learn to to get that uh, that level of strength up so that you can continue to to push yourself harder and stronger. And I think Paul's saying that same thing that you have to be dissatisfied with the status quo. That I'm on the race to heaven, so why should I even run? I mean, Christ is going to save me whether I'm. I do a bunch of good works or not. I've accepted Christ as my Savior. What's, what's the point? I'm, I'm here. I'm coasting. I'm good. Uh, unfortunately, there are far too many Christians who feel like they're on the treadmill, the, the spiritual treadmill at level one, and that's good enough for them. Uh, I think Paul would encourage us to turn up the treadmill. <laughs> turn, turn up that spiritual treadmill and press toward the goal. He says, I press on, I am pursuing this goal that I may lay hold of that for which Christ has laid hold of me. He's got a prize before him and he's pushing himself to get there. He's not satisfied with the status quo. Uh, and so he, he says, I am pressing on and he's going to use that word again. Uh, and so in verse uh, 13 and 14, uh, we, we see another um, another way to uh, show that we are mature, another goal for us to mature in Christ, uh, and that is to be, to be focused on what matters. Uh, to be focused on what matters. Uh, one thing about uh, just with the whole uh, pressing on and being dissatisfied and, and even here as we change gears for focusing on what matters, our, our guideline, our... our uh, yeah, our guideline needs to be Jesus Christ. Uh, many Christians are self-satisfied because they compare their running with that to other Christians. You know, we are not comparing ourselves to other Christians. 
and usually those who are not making much progress. Uh, but Paul did not compare himself with others. He compared himself to Jesus Christ and knew there was always room for improvement. So it's easy for me to, to say, you know, if I compare myself to somebody else who is maybe in a, in a worse state than I am, that, well, at least I'm not this bad. You know, I'm doing better than this person. They, they hardly do anything, you know, or they hardly do uh, whatever. You know, I can say, I can run faster than a turtle, okay? Now, that's pretty impressive, right? <laughs> Can I? <laughs> I don't know. I've never actually tried it. <laughs> uh, that's, that's what I'll do this afternoon. I'll try that out. Um, but what about running faster than a rabbit? You know, what about running faster than a cheetah? Uh, depending on who you're comparing yourself to, you can make yourself look really good, right? Um, you know, I like to joke with people that, uh, and I've said this before, that I'm, I pastor one of the largest churches in the greater Walnut area, you know. If I really want to sound impressive, I'll say I pastor one of the five largest churches in the greater Walnut area. Or I could even say I pastor the biggest Baptist church in Walnut. <laughs> I, I, I'm assuming I do. <laughs> There's not another one over there. Uh, it all depends on how you uh, spin, spin the truth, right? Uh, but when we compare ourselves to Jesus Christ, that is our true comparison. And we're going to see, boy, I got room to grow. So that way, whether you are a new believer or a believer who, or if you've been a believer for, you know, 80 years, uh, you, you can still look to Christ and say, Lord, I've gone a long way, but I still have a long way to go. I'm not going to give up pursuing what Christ has pursued me for. And so he, Paul presses on and he's focused on what matters. Let's look at verses 13 through 14. He says, brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. So Paul is not comparing himself to those around him. He is not um, overwhelmed and burdened by the things of his past. He says, I am forgetting those things which are behind. I'm no longer being affected by my past, but I am pressing on, I'm pressing forward to those things which are ahead. And when you are in Christ, those things which are ahead is always better than those things you've left behind. Uh, think about if, if you were saved at an older age, maybe there were some lifestyles and things in your past that you had to leave behind or that you got to leave behind, you chose to leave behind. Maybe there are some things that would still burden you and would still trouble you. You know, you can give those to God. He, he says he's removed our sin as far as the east is from the west, that he has chosen to forget them. In other words, he has chosen not to let them uh, matter to him when he sees us now saved in the, by the blood of Jesus Christ. We can change and we can grow and be more like his son, Jesus. And that's hard. I mean, growing is hard, right? Uh, growing pains, we've, we've got three kids and they've all experienced growing pains. Uh, sometimes they'll complain their legs hurt and then the next day they're about three feet taller than they were the day before. Um, you know, growing pains can hurt. Um, growing stronger can hurt. Uh, you know, as I've said, if your workout doesn't cause you discomfort, it's, is it really doing you any benefit? Um, as, as much as it could. Paul is focused on what matters. He says, I'm not looking at those things which are behind. I'm focused on what's ahead, Jesus Christ. And he says, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. That, that upward call that, um, the, that after an Olympic race, whether it's a foot race or a chariot race, the winner would be called up to the platform and re would receive his, his trophy. And Paul says, that's what I'm doing. I'm pursuing so that when Christ calls me upward, I, I will have that prize. And he's not wanting to do it for his own glory by any stretch. Uh, he, he wants to do that for, for the Lord's glory uh, from what he has written here. He is focused on what matters. And as I said, he's not comparing himself to others. He's not um, focused on what's going on, um, being distracted. Um, scripture warns us of being distracted by every wind of false doctrine and by people and false teachers who would lead us astray. Um, scripture has warnings for us. 
uh, uh, of those things. And Paul says, I'm forgetting those things and I'm reaching forward. You know, it's not that I have completely forgotten. It's a process. I'm learning to forget and I'm learning to reach forward. So Paul is focused and he's focusing on those things that matter. Uh, and then uh, third thing is that he is disciplined. Uh, Paul is disciplined. Uh, kind of picking up on those words, we already get that idea that he is about pressing on and pressing toward and, and reaching and all, and all these action verbs. But he's very disciplined in his walk so that he is willing and able to be corrected. He is seeking God for guidance and for teaching and he's walking in unity with the other brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, I just see him uh, overall as a very disciplined Christian. Uh, verse 15, he says, Therefore, let us, as many as are mature, have this mind, and if in anything you think otherwise, God will reveal even this to you. Nevertheless, to the, to the degree that we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule and let us be of the same mind. He says, those of us who are mature have the same mind. Be, what I, everything he's talked about, do this thing. If you are a mature believer, do this, and you will be doing this. And if you, anything you think otherwise, God will reveal even this to you. You know, it's, it's very hard to be told that you're wrong. <laughs> I mean, do we like being told we're wrong? It's, it can be hard. Some people deal with it fine and, and others don't. I think a lot of it depends on the person, at least for me, the person who's telling me you're wrong <laughs> and how they approach that. Um, but Paul says that if you, have, if you think otherwise, if you think differently from everything I've just talked about, he says, God will reveal even this to you. So don't be afraid to go to the Lord and, say, and to say, Lord, teach me. Lord, correct me. Lord, change me. Because that's what a mature believer does. That is what someone who is a disciplined believer does. They go to God f for not just to feel good or not just to have him take away all their problems in their world, and in their life, but to say, Lord, I need to be taught. I need to change. I need to grow. I need to be stretched. I mean, I, I think it takes a very mature believer to, to say to God, if you are going to uh, give me a trial of my faith, I accept that. <laughs> to say, Lord, I need my faith tested. I need my faith stretched. You know, I don't, I don't go around looking for trouble personally, but <laughs> I, I think that's along those lines of people when they say, don't pray for patience because you're going to have trouble if you do. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of truth to that, uh, that how we learn patience is to have what patience we do have tested and we can learn to grow stronger. Paul was disciplined uh, in his walk, in his run. And he says, nevertheless, to, to the degree that we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule and let us be of the same mind. He says, let us go and proceed in unity Let's walk together. A mature believer is able to walk together in unity with other believers. And he says, if you have been turning away from this pattern, this pattern of, of seeking Christ and following Christ and, and promoting Christ and doing all for Christ and finding joy in Christ and all these things he's talked about, he says, if you have thought differently, then God will reveal that to you. So seek him out and let's walk together believing the same thing. You know, that's one of the joys of this, of this church and churches like this is that though we have different backgrounds and we have different uh, points of view and different opinions on different things, when it comes down to it, our core beliefs are, are similar and we are united in those core, core beliefs that we believe Jesus Christ is God and that we believe he is the son of God and that he is our savior, that we believe God's word is true and that it is profitable for us and it instructs us in our day-to-day -day life. And we believe so many things that are core to our doctrine and we are walking in unity. It would be chaos if we all disagreed on even the most basic foundational principles of this church. And I think that's why so many people and or so many churches have strayed into heresy because they're giving up those, those foundations and they're giving up the fundamentals uh, and just... You know, let's just ignore the things we differ on, and pretty soon you have a very, very watered-down gospel. Paul says, you might need to change. I've changed, 
But we need to agree on the same thing and those things he's talked about. He encourages us to walk together by the same rule and have the same mind, to be united. Um, the, uh, the half point I want us to think about uh, in ver- is in verse 17. And this is just really a teaser for next week, but it's about uh, discipleship. In verse 17, he says, Brethren, join in following my example and note those who so walk as you have us for a pattern. Paul is setting himself up as a pattern because he's following Christ. Uh, and I want, I want to talk a little bit about that. He doesn't really go into a lot of detail about discipleship and what that looks like here. Uh, I think he's mostly talking about the need for that because of the quality of people that are around him. But as I'm thinking about a mature Christian, a mature Christian will have and make disciples. There will be people in your life that you reach out to with the word of God, that you um, set your ex- an example before them, uh, and that's a good, healthy habit to have if, if you are to be a mature believer. Um, so I'd encourage you to meditate on, on that verse and others like that this week as we look forward to, um, to coming back together next Sunday, Lord willing, and the virus doesn't flare up. <laughs> uh, but just to, uh, to wrap this up, uh, some marks of maturity. Are you dissatisfied with the status quo in your spiritual life? Are you dissatisfied with just coasting? That's really where it begins, to say, Lord, I have just been coasting in my Christian life, and I need to take it seriously. Um, That's where that change happens. Be dissatisfied with the status quo. Keep our focus on the prize. What is our prize? Um, Honestly, I think we have a lot (laughs) that we could call our prize. Jesus Christ, eternal life, a home in heaven, that, that victor's crown. Um, so many things that await us in heaven. And Paul says, that's where my focus is, is laying up treasures in heaven, not on this earth. Keep your focus on the prize. That's going to help during difficult times. Because in any ministry, whether it's um, from the very simplest to the most complex ministry, uh, we are working with people. And there can be days that are joys and days that are frustrating. When we keep our eyes on the prize that Christ has for us, uh, we are are reminded of why we're in this to begin with. Keep your focus on the prize, Jesus Christ. And then uh, finally, uh, be disciplined. Uh, It takes discipline to fight against our old nature. It takes discipline to learn to read God's word every day and to read it in a way that you can remember. Um, some like to read multiple chapters. Some like to read just a few verses. I, I, honestly, I don't think it matters, at least as long as you begin, could be in God's word. And maybe try something different and try something new. Uh, maybe what works for you is good and you don't want to mess that up. That's, you know, that's fine. Um, I'm not necessarily saying that's the status quo you should be dis- uh, pleased with, but um, be in God's word. And make that effort. Be disciplined. Uh, you know, you're disciplined to, to, like, you're disciplined to work out. You're disciplined to eat three times a day. Does that take discipline or is that just second nature? I don't know. Okay, only eating three times a day. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, you know, it takes discipline. There are a lot of areas in our life that discipline comes easy. But I find when it's the real important things, like spending time with God, that's where there's challenges because... You know what? Our flesh doesn't want us to have that time with the Lord. So be disciplined and follow him. All right, let's pray. Father, thank you uh, for the, the testimony that we're able to read in your word this morning that, um, uh, that Paul sets for us, that, Lord, you developed in Paul's life, that he was a man who had a sin nature like us. And, Lord, we know as we've seen in his writings in in Romans, he struggles with his sin nature and he praises you, Lord, for you have saved him from that. Lord, just as you have saved those who have trusted you as Savior. And uh, Father, I pray uh, that you will help us to to stretch and to grow in our Christian life. Uh, Lord, that it could be hard. It could be difficult to begin to learn new habits and godly habits, but I pray, Father, that we would not give up on that. And that, Lord, if we are 
doing well in certain areas of our life, that, Father, you'd help us to maintain that and to continue in that and to grow in those areas. And I thank you for the privilege it is to, uh, to be in your word and to spend that time with you together today as a church family. And Lord, I pray uh, that you will help us to look into our own lives, our own church family, our own family, our community, our neighborhood to see if and where there are those who, uh, Lord, we can be an example to, that we can um, come alongside of and encourage. Uh, Lord, I know we probably all know people that we could reach out to, and um, whether it's a simple act of inviting them to church or um, inviting them to a time of, of Bible study together or um, any manner of things, Lord, that we can do to, to show them Jesus in our life. I pray you'll give us the wisdom and, and creativity um, to see that. And I look forward to um, exploring that more uh, next week. Thank you for the direction you give us in your word. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Our